Rodney Clough was born and raised in the American Mormon colony of Colonia Juarez in the northern part of Chihuahua, Mexico. His ancestors were some of the first colonizers of America. He traces his ancestry back to the Anglo-Saxon Vikings to the tribe of Ephraim of the House of Israel. Rodney became interested in the hollow earth theory while working on a New Mexico farm at the age of 16, where the farm manager's son told the workers about the theory. Years later, Rodney saw an advertisement for Dr. Raymond Bernard's book, The Hollow Earth, and thereby started many years of study and research that has culminated in his e-book, World Top Secret, Our Earth is Hollow, which is available on his website, which I'll tell you about in a sec. Currently, Mr. Clough works as a computer programmer analyst and continues his research into evidences for hollow planets as a hobby. Our special guest tonight on Coast to Coast. Rodney, how are you? Very fine. My pleasure. Boy, I've been wanting to do this topic for years, and I'm glad you're with us tonight. And appreciate the fact, even during a holiday season, you'd spend some time with us. Well, very glad to be with you. The story that uh, you were told when you were working on the farm, can you relate that to us? Yes. Uh, when I was 16, uh, with some colony boys, we got a job out on a New Mexico farm that was managed by my uncle's brother. And uh, the guy that I was working with uh, was uh, an older fellow, uh, also from the colonies. And one evening he told me that the farm manager's son had told him about uh, this book that he had read, uh, The Hollow Earth. Mm -hmm. And he commented to, to, to the, the boys that he thought it was an ideal place for the Lord to hide the lost ten tribes. And that picked my interest, and uh, it just stayed in the back of my mind. And years later, when I saw this advertisement for the book, I sent for it. It was about uh, 1974, around about there, and I started in earnest uh, researching this uh, subject ever since then, and I have come up with a substantial amount of uh, scientific, uh, scriptural, and historical evidence that supports the hollow earth theory. And you've supplied a graphic to our webmaster, Lex, which uh, if everyone listening has the ability to get to their computer, we're going to be making some reference to it throughout the night. So you might want to be able to get on the coasttocoastam.com website and look at it. And by the way, Rodney's website is called ourhollowearth.com, and there's a link with his name right on the coasttocoastam.com website. It'll take you straight to his his website. There have been many theories about the hollow earth theory, Rodney. We'll talk about all of them tonight, uh, whether uh, who's living there, if anyone's living there. Perhaps they might be extraterrestrials. And But primarily, here's a question for you. If the earth is hollow, don't you think uh, we would have been told by it, it would have been spotted by satellites, or has it been, and they're just not telling us, and if they're not, why? 1981, I went to, I took my family and we flew to Fairbanks, Alaska. To, uh, uh, my, obje my object of going up there was to research the hollow earth and see if I could find any evidence. And I met a an interesting person up there in Fairbanks. His name was John Gagne. Mm -hmm. At one time, he was a radio announcer down in Juneau, the capital of Alaska. And one uh, weekend, he was out with his buddies outside the city uh, and they happened to notice a, a light light up a, above a mountain nearby them and presently it turned red and zipped off into space and then back on his radio station he brought up the subject and asked if anybody had seen the UFO over the weekend that the, him and his buddies saw he says that uh, shortly after that a woman came in to talk to him. Her name was Sylvia Darvell. He said that Sylvia Darvell had been involved in Alaskan politics from way back and had been a very close friend of Admiral Byrd. And she told uh, my friend John Gagne that Admiral Byrd, after his Arctic flight of 1947, had 
come to her and confided in her what he had found up there. She said that animal bird flew past the ice, came to a continent covered with lush vegetation, saw a mammoth wandering along on the terrain below. He said, she said that, uh, he says that they were presently sighted by flying saucer type craft that took control of his airplane and landing, landed him near an inner earth city. He was taken in and interviewed by a government official of their country and their concern was that we had just uh, used nuclear weapons to blow up a couple of cities out here at the end of World War II, mm -hmm. just a year before. And the message that they wanted him to bring back to our government was that they opposed our use of nuclear weapons. He was treated very, uh, you know, very politely. He said that they were very friendly people. He said that they were large in stature, they were very highly advanced in the sciences, and uh, that they had monorail trains between their cities, and uh, flying craft that we have since uh, uh, got come to call uh, flying saucers. Mm -hmm. He was taken back to his airplane, put back in the air, and when he arrives back out on out of Earth, he reported to Washington. And he was told to uh, not to keep this uh, secret, but not to tell anybody about it. But um, this story that uh, Silvio Darvel told my friend John Gagne has confirmed uh, the rumors that we've heard uh, down through the years that Admiral Byrd actually found something up there. And reportedly he put some of this in a diary, didn't he, Rodney? He did. He actually wrote a book, and he had it in bookstores, and uh, the government uh, agents confiscated them all. Uh, his family still has uh, his uh, writings, but they're kept under lock and key. Uh, John Gagne told me that he met one, a friend of the Bird family, when he was attending Brigham Young University uh, in Provo, Utah, and that... Uh, over the Christmas break, he asked her if she could uh, ask the Bird family uh, if uh, he could look at some of the writings. And she came back from Christmas break and says, no, they don't let anybody uh, read it, their, his writings, that he ha they have it on their lock and key, probably because they don't want to lose it. Or well, how would you like to get your hands on that, just to take a look at that? Wouldn't that be fascinating? Very fascinating. It's interesting yeah. that the family of Admiral Byrd to this day believe that he found, discovered that our Earth is hollow. And and was that was he going into the the North Pole for that? Right. That flight was February of nineteen forty seven. North Pole though, not South Pole. North Pole. Yeah. Now I assume Sylvia D Darvell, up there in Alaska, is no longer alive. Is that correct? I don't know. I, okay. I really don't know. Because that, that would put her way up there in years. Let's talk about the possibilities. So I assume, though, what you're saying to me is, is if satellites are taking pictures of a hollow Earth, they're not showing them to us. Is that correct? That's correct. I was on a, the, the uh, email list with Jan Lomprick of South Africa a few years ago. And uh, one of the uh, list members came on one day, and he says that uh, his son at his high school had uh, invited a um, NASA scientist to come talk to them and after the discussion uh, he followed him down the hall and he stopped him and he said um, point blank he asked him uh, do you guys have uh, satellite images of the South Pole opening and the scientist looked at him for a little bit and then he just said yes but we uh, paintbrush them out to look like ice and snow so oh, there was a, com a confession by this scientist. Now, is is this hollow Earth theory, is this supposed to be a hole that goes straight from the North Pole right through the planet to the South Pole? Or right. is there some break in the here? Because, well, I mean, something's got to be... Uh, 
uh, you know, there's got to be for something to be that long. I mean, it's it's got to be it's huge. I, so I can't picture that. The Earth uh, is similar to a a bubble or a ball. It is. It has a shell. My estimate of the thickness of the shell is about 800 miles from the outside to the inner surface, at near up, up near the pole, thinner towards the equator, because uh, indications are the acceleration of gravity increases towards the pole, requiring more matter, and that inside the Earth, uh, suspended in the hollow, is a central sun that emits a solar wind out through the polar openings, causing the auroras to light up above the uh, poles. And that at near about five degrees from the poles is lo- are situated uh, polar openings that curve gradually into the interior of the Earth. My so estimate... Go ahead, Rodney. My estimate of the polar openings is that they are about 890 miles from crest to crest, and it gradually curves into the inner earth. Uh, from outside the, in, the inner surface would be about 2,500 miles, and as it gradually curves in where, where it gets down close to where they're to the neck of it, it's only about 90 miles uh, in diameter. So with that curvature, though, it's very possible that you could fly into it or even walk into it, and you wouldn't even know because it would be ever so slightly, right? Very, very slightly. The curvature can, can be de- de- detected, and on our voyage to the Hollow Earth expedition, we're going to take uh, gyroscopes that will be able to detect the curvature into the polar opening and help us locate that 90-mile aperture. As you go into the hollow earth, as Admiral, uh, Admiral Byrd described, uh, you start seeing um, vegetation, uh, prehistoric-looking animals, and then you've got this colony of extraterrestrials. What are the possibilities, Rodney, that also within this hollow earth might be human beings who have somehow decided to live there? Is that possible? I'm uncertain that the... Um People that live in the hollow earth are not extraterrestrials. They're, uh, most of them are, are uh, from the lost tribes of Israel that uh, migrated into the north countries over 2,500 years ago and have just progressed uh, faster than we have because they don't have wars and sm- sickness like we have. Well, now, what's your, what, what's your theory or evidence behind this one? In 1829... A couple of Norwegian uh, people, uh, Olaf Jansen and his father Jens, uh, were fishing up north of uh, Franz Josef Land when they noticed a lead through the ice. And they followed this lead northeast of Franz Josef Land and accidentally found their way through the North Pole opening to the inner earth. They... uh, reached the inner earth uh, and, and uh, sailed along the coast and went up this big river, which they later found out was called by the inhabitants of the inner earth the High River Heidekel, which is one of the rivers that flows out of the Garden, Be- Ar- Garden of Eden. They were met by a ship of inner earth that was coming down the river, and were taken in by them, and they lived among them for two years. And they learned their language, which he described as similar to Sanskrit. And uh, they related to him that their god that was uh, Jehovah. Jehovah is the god of the ancient Israelites. Now, it's interesting that Olaf Jensen and his father were not Christians. Right. They they right. believed in the Norwegian gods of Odin and Thor, which is their mm-hmm. ancestors. And their ancestors, they they have a legend that their ancestors, uh, their cousins of their ancestors, uh, migrated into the North Country, and uh, Olaf Jensen's father called them the Chosen People. And they believed that uh, 
those people uh, were uh, related to them. All right, so you believe that we're not dealing with extraterrestrials here, as some people have theorized, but but human Earth-bound inhabitants who have had such a tremendous technological capabilities, but that they are the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. You know, only 300 years ago uh, was our was uh, uh, the time when uh, Galileo uh, lived. When he looked through his telescope and looked at Jupiter and saw moons going around Jupiter and then claimed to the Catholic Church that uh, we weren't the center of the universe, that we probably went, we were probably orbiting the sun. Well, that was only 300 years ago. These people inside the Hall of Earth have been living there for 2,500 years with the scientists, scientific uh, advancement that they have. They're a couple of thousand years in advance than us. I believe that they have the, this uh, techno technology, uh, that, that they have these flying saucer technology, and that uh, a lot of the little green men that they see are actually robots. Dr. All right, so when we see humanoids or something uh, like that reported, you're saying that these are robots sent from those in the hollow earth yes uh, uh dr greer is a uh, medical doctor that has researched uh flying saucers and has uh, about 400 or 500 expert witnesses one of them said that uh, they have dissected these ufo knots that they have been able to down some of the flying saucers and dissect some of these ufo knots and uh they des he describes that um, they have two brains. One is computer chips, and the other one is a human-type brain. And he says it doesn't have any uh, sexual organs, no digestive, di digestive organs, uh, no vocal cords. They communicate with telepathy. Uh, my conclusion is that the inner Earth people have built these androids, that fly their flying saucers out to reconnoiter the outer outer earth the hole itself would be how big let's say looking at it from the top of the planet looking down how big would that hole be in terms of miles across okay uh... where it starts to dip into the into the polar opening is about four hundred and forty five miles i estimate from the center of the opening it gradually curves into the earth so that at the neck of the opening it's only about 90 miles now there was a a, a fellow that uh, sent an email uh, uh, asking about the uh, airline flights over the pole and why they haven't seen these polar openings well they really the polar opening is quite small uh, they could easily miss it in all their flights up there all right, stay with us, Rodney. We're going to take this quick break. Welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie, Rodney Clough, our guest. Rodney, let's uh, get right back into this hollow earth theory. Uh, the uh, We were talking about the, the distance. So you say it's about 445 miles across before it really starts to go in, the curvature goes in. Uh, uh, now, when you talk about hollow earth, uh, again, are we talking about something that goes all the way down from the North Pole to the South Pole, or do you think it, it hollows, it stops, and then maybe there's another hole at the South Pole that does the same thing? Or does it go all the way through the planet? This goes all the way through the planet, but you need to understand that the Earth is mostly hollow. Like an atom is hollow, uh, it has an electron shell and a nucleus uh, suspended in that hollow. The Earth also has a shell. It's only about 800 miles from the outside to the inside, and there's 6,400 miles inside the Earth that is hollow. There's uh, space. All right, if you were to be in the middle there, aside from the fact that you say there's a sun there, looking up, what do you think you'd see? What would you see? Rocks? What would it look like? If you're standing on the inner surface, yeah, and just looking, I guess, toward the sides of the inside of the planet, what would you be seeing? Well, out on the outer surface, our uh, Earth curves away uh, so that you can't 
see past about 60 miles before the horizon dips below the the horizon. Inside would be just the opposite, where the the horizon uh, uh, gradually curves up. And uh, Olaf Jansen described the sky as a purplishly color because of the uh, the other side of the hollow was also covered with uh, vegetation. And, uh, of course, uh, directly above your head is the, the inner sun. Uh, would there be clouds up there, in there? Oh, the, yeah, the atmosphere uh, inside uh, is, the, the, is just like on the outside of the sur- surface of the Earth. Uh, most of the atmosphere uh, is within the first 45 miles, but extends up uh, to about 600 miles uh, uh, as it rarefies toward space. The same on the inside of the Earth, the, earth, the air uh, would only go up about 45 miles and uh, on up to about 600 miles in a rarefied, rarefied uh, uh, density. No, we had uh, on this planet uh, the, the, yesterday an 8.1 to 8.2 magnitude um, in, in near Antarctica that affected even up to Tasmania, up near Australia, New Zealand. It, it was It must have been six, seven miles deep in the ocean. How would that affect, would that affect any inhabitants in a hollow earth? I mean, do they feel our surface earthquakes or anything like that? Yes, the earth, earth, large earthquakes cause the earth to vibrate like a bell. And uh, a bell is hollow. So that right there is evidence that our earth is hollow. Uh, when, whenever there's a large earthquake, it uh, causes the earth to ring like a bell with a period of about... Uh, 54 minutes and uh, you can find that right in your encyclopedia and uh, receive a lot of rebounds from the inner inner surface and then on the other side of the planet there is a shadow zone where very little of these earthquakes reach uh, this shadow zone is caused because of the hollow the, the, the earthquakes don't pass through the hollow now, there are some people who believe the planet's only 6,000 years old. Others, as I do, believe that, of course, it's 4.5 billion years old. What's your thought on that? I believe that this Earth uh, was uh, born of other planets. Uh, the ancient uh, astronomers, uh, Chaldean astronomers, are reported uh, as recorded in uh, one of... Uh, Manuel Velikovsky's books, uh, I think it was World in Collision, that uh, the planet Venus was ejected out of the head of Jupiter and for many years was a comet that went around the, the sun and uh, came close to the Earth and caused a lot of the, um, the uh, plagues of the exodus of the uh, Israelites from, from Egypt. And... Uh, well, and that's Velikovsky's theory, so you do believe that about Venus? Yes. Okay. And there's also, uh, in, in our church, uh, there's some, uh, some of the early leaders indicated that planets are born from other planets. So if the planets are hollow, it's conceivable that they could be created inside of a, a larger planet and then ejected out through a polar opening. I'm not Mormon, um... I was raised Catholic. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Do you still practice the Mormon faith? Because I, my question is: Is do all Mormons believe in the uh, in a hollow Earth theory, or or is this just coming from you, and you just happen to be a Mormon? Uh, R. Clayton Burrell, uh, in his book uh, The Lost Tribes, uh, did a survey of the Latter Day Saints and found that about about four percent of them thought that the 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 hollow Earth theory might be a good uh, explanation of where the lost ten tribes are. So, I don't think that there's any more Latter Day Saints or Mormons that believe in the Hollow Earth than just the regular people out out in the world. Okay, so it's not a practicing part of the faith that no. the Earth is hollow. Okay, I understand. Tell me a little bit more about why you believe the Earth is hollow. I mean, what kind of scientific evidence is really out there? Well, like I explained, uh, I studied earthquakes and how uh, 
the scientists say that uh, whenever there's a large earthquake, it causes the earth to ring like a bell, and a bell is hollow. And, and then on the other side of the earth from the epicenter, there's this shadow zone where the earthquakes don't arrive. Now, there's two kinds of earthquakes. There's the S waves that uh, shake like a rope when you shake it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the P waves that are like uh, are compression waves like uh, sound waves are. And so there, but both kinds of, of waves have a shadow zone on the opposite side of the earth from the epicenter. The, the S waves, scientists uh, claim that they don't go through the center of the earth because it's uh, molten, but they, they will also wouldn't go through if it was hollow. So uh, it, it's con- consistent with the hollow earth theory is consistent with the, uh, the observation of earthquakes. All right, now you say there's a sun in the middle of the, uh, of, of the planet, so right. it, can't be, it can't be that big. Our estimation is that it's about 600 miles in diameter, which uh, actually would make it look a lot bigger than our sun. In fact, 23 times bigger uh, than our sun. Uh, One calculation of a friend I have said if you took a a circle out of a piece of paper 25 inches in diameter and held at arm's length, that would be the the, the, the parent size of the inner sun from you. All right, I'm going to try to pitch this down. Now, the sun is, all right, the sun's in the middle of the planet. Um, it's about 600 miles in diameter, which means then that the people on the surface of the hollow portion of the planet are about 3,000-some miles from the sun, right? Right. Wouldn't they burn up? I mean, if we were 3,000 miles from our sun, it's history time for us. Yeah, but the inner sun is built uh, so that it, produces just the, uh, the right amount of heat to produce uh, ideal climate and temperatures on the inside surface of the planet. It's a paradise there. Uh, so Olaf you... Jensen reported that uh, everything grows bigger there. Trees grow to 1,000 feet tall. Uh, even the people are from 7 feet to 15 feet tall. Oh, my. Which, uh, well, the Bible used to describe giants. So maybe they're descendants from them. Well, actually, I uh, have evidence that Adam and Eve were uh, at least a 10 feet tall people. Uh, there was a um, apostle of our church that was out riding on his mule in the early days of the church about uh, over 150 years ago. And he was riding along, and he noticed walking beside him was this uh, hairy being that he turned and looked, and it was uh, looked like a Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. And shocked he didn't know what to think but then that that being started talking to him he says his name was cain that the lord had condemned him to be a wanderer in the earth and that he couldn't die he had tried many times to kill himself but couldn't and he was as tall as this apostle was on his on his mule so he's at least 10 feet tall and he was the son of adam so Indications are that the original, um, our original ancestors were large in stature. Almost like the dinosaurs uh, in, in a very pure state when this planet didn't have the kind of pollution and atmospheric problems that it has now. Right, right. Describe for me, Rodney, if you can, to the best of your ability, what the inside then looks like. Uh, don't mention the sun, you've already talked about that, but what does the surface of the inside look like? What kind of vegetation is there? What kind of animals are there? What kind of cities are there? What do they look like? Well, Ab Jansen reported that uh, there, there is one continent inside the Earth and one ocean. The ocean is a small compared to the continent. I f- estimate the continent would be about 16,000 miles from one side to the other, and the, and the inner ocean only about 3,000. Uh, so most of the inner surface is uh, uh, inhabitable uh, compared to the outs- outer surface of the earth. We have three-fourths of uh, uh, water instead of three, three-fourths three land. So there's po- possibly more land in- inside the planet than there is on the outside. And there's lush vegetation. There. The, the vegetation grows uh, like 
uh, paradise. Uh, Olaf Jensen uh, remarked that uh, some of the apples that grow on the trees in the, in the earth are as large as your head. And uh, peaches are, uh, are, are just humongous. Pears, uh, the, the grapes are, were as, as the size of our oranges. And uh, the people uh, there live to be uh, up to 800 years old uh, with no sickness or disease. Uh, it's just a, a veritable, par veritable paradise. After spending uh, a year learning their language, he and his father were taken overland in a monorail train to their capital city, which is built around the original Lost Garden of Eden. And it was he described it on the highest uh, mountain plateau of the inner continent that where, where uh, the vegetation grew even more uh, profusely. And he described the uh, artesian fountain in the Garden of Eden and how it uh, divides and flows into four rivers that go to the four uh, corners of the earth. Two go to the north and south pole, and the other go the other two directions. Are there other openings to get into the uh, hollow earth? Uh, are there special caves perhaps throughout the planet or just at the north and south pole? There are tunnels uh, throughout the earth have been discovered, uh, probably built by the antediluvian people that were quite advanced in the sciences and technology. Uh, there are caverns that go all the way through the earth. Uh, uh, for example, the the book Edidorpa, uh, hollow earth researcher Bruce Walton from Provo, Utah, uh, uh, f figured out that uh, the I am the man guy in the book Edidorpa was, was actually a man named uh, William Morgan who had joined the Freemasonry uh, Society back in uh, 18... Uh, 27 around there. Hmm. Freemasons and, come up again, huh? And uh, that uh, they threw him in jail on trumped up charges of debt and and then stole him out of the jail, threw a body into a, a lake and claimed it was him. But they had actually just kidnapped him and took him on a, a journey to the, to the hollow earth through a communicating cavern. He described this entrance to this cavern in Kentucky, which I believe is probably the Mammoth Cave which uh, I understand they haven't found the end of it. And his book, is uh, he came back several years later and with this manuscript, and it was published. It's called Ed Adorp. It's quite interesting. He describes the earth as being hollow with a shell of 800 miles thick and, uh, and, and, and the conditions within the, the crust of the earth on so his there, journey to the in, inner earth. There are a lot of people, Rodney, who believe this theory, aren't there? There are in the thousands, I would say, all over the earth, yeah, but probably no more than about 4% of the people. I want to talk a little bit about an expedition that is uh, heading that way to look for the hole in the planet. We'll talk about that next uh, next hour. When when I was a kid, I remember reading about what was called Shambhala, um, an area that people believed was a tunnel into uh, the center of the planet. I remember reading Jules Verne's book, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Were those all talking about what you're talking about tonight, and that is a hollow earth? Yeah, Jules Verne's book is actually built uh, based on the exact same ideas that was uh, uh, reported by Olaf Jansen. Uh, he, his uh, fictional book, The Journey to the Center of the Earth, was about some explorers that descended into an extinct uh, volcano in Iceland, mm -hmm. and they went down into the inner world, and they came out into an inner surface where there was an ocean, a continent, and an inner sun giving off light and plentiful plant and animal life, and they even caught sight of uh, some giant people tending a herd of mammoths. So these are all exactly the same things that Olaf Jensen reported he actually saw. So he must have had it, had some pretty good information. You were talking at the top of the uh, break, right before it, 
about planes that would fly over the poles. Why can't they see the hole? Actually, they do. I have a friend that was flying in an air. air he flies a lot, and at one time he was sitting by this uh, airliner uh, uh, pilot that was just sitting right by him t as a passenger. All right. And he asked him if he had ever uh, seen the polar opening at the North Pole, and he, he in in this airline pilot told him he had. So they're they just don't they just keep it between themselves not to raise a suspicion i guess but people have seen these the polar openings we get a lot of reports of people disappearing rodney is it possible that they're being taken and yanked into the hollow earth uh i don't think so uh there's in indications that the, the our government has been uh knocking flying saucers out of the sky and back engineering these flying saucers and have uh, been building them underground, and they have been uh, abducting people to try to uh, do uh, bio engine uh, bio uh, engineering on them. Trying, trying, I suppose, to try to uh, duplicate these androids that they see uh, flying out uh, in these flying saucers. Well, when we come back, I want to talk about the expedition planned in the summer of. Uh... Oh, uh, I think it's 2006, as a matter of fact, to look for the hollow earth. And uh, also, let's talk a little bit more about the inhabitants of the hollow earth, Rodney, when we come right back. I'm George Norrie, back in a moment. It's Coast to Coast continues. A little bit later on, I'll open up the phone lines. I'll give you an opportunity to chat with Rodney Clough about the hollow earth theory. I kind of like that opening. Uh, maybe I am in the hollow earth. I've been keeping it as a surprise. But I'll be back in a moment. Rodney Clough, our guest. We're talking about the hollow earth. But as a matter of fact, he's got a book called The World Top Secret, Our Earth is Hollow. It is an e-book available on his website. A couple websites, by the way. They're linked up with coasttocoastam.com. Ourhollowearth.com, okay? And then the other is called voyagehollowearth.com. We'll explain that one in a moment because... There's going to be an expedition as well. But I've got a few more questions. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie with our guest tonight, Rodney Clough. Rodney, some people have been sending me messages, and, and they, they, they think, what happens if you fall in the hole? It, it is the, the incline into the curvature is so slight. It's not like you fall in. You just walk in, or you fly in, or you come in. But, I mean, you don't fall into a hole, right? Well, this is a misconception that scientists have... Uh, have uh, Permeated pro propagated okay. that uh, the center of gravity of the Earth is in the center of the Earth. Well, there is a small center of gravity in the inner sun, but since most of the Earth's matter is in the Earth's shell, then that is where the acceleration of gravity accelerates towards uh, is in the shell of the planet. And as you're going around the polar lip, you're accelerated to where the mass of the planet is, and that's below your feet. So you're not going to fall through the hole because the center of gravity is not, for us on the surface, is not the center of the planet. It's this is the matter that's under our feet. What is keeping the central sun, the sun in the hollow Earth, from hitting the sides or something? What's keeping it in its floating orbit? Or I guess it's it's floating position uh, it's suspended in the center of the earth by gravity and also by uh, a, a ion emission that repels uh, it, it repels from all directions so it keeps it centrally located in the center of the planet all right so it, 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 it there's no danger of the thing smashing into the inside of the planet right no 
Absolutely not. All right, let's let's gonna we're gonna go to our website and look at the hollow earth graphic that you gave us. And uh, do you have it available to you right now? And you could just take us through this sure. and kind of show us the the openings are on in uh, are about eighty four point four degrees. They're not ninety degrees. They're not straight up, but it's tilted just a little bit, right? How is there a reason for that? Yes, uh, the uh, polar openings were probably formed with the Earth in rotation with uh, centrifugal force throwing matter out from the center uh, and at the poles creating these polar openings centered over the axis of the Earth in the original creation period. But uh, evidently the Earth has been bypassed by planet-sized comets in past geological history and has tipped the Earth on its axis. Indication of this is the Pyramid of Giza in uh, Egypt. When they discovered the entrance into the pyramid, they realized it was pointing to the North Star. But uh, curiously, the North Star that it was pointing out is uh, five degrees off from our polar star. So uh, I, th I think that uh, it, the evidence shows that this pyramid was built before the flood by the uh, highly advanced civilization that lived before the flood of Noah and that uh, it originally pointed to the North uh, Star at that time. But are there... Are there any inhabitants living on the curvature before you get into the hollow uh, inner space? The uh, po North Polar Opening is located in the Arctic Ocean so that uh, there is no land until you get halfway through the opening then you reach in the inner continent. Now this inner continent has been sighted as a mirage all around the Arctic uh, the, the Russians have sighted it uh, north of the New Siberian Islands. They call it Sanikov Land. There was an explorer, uh, Fridjof Jan Nansen, uh, took his uh, ship, the Fram, uh, up there uh, trying to find Sanikov Land. Uh, he came very close to it, and he found a lot of, uh, noticed a, a lot of anomalous uh, happenings up there, phenomenon. For example, he noticed that uh, at the 70 degrees north latitude, 135 east longitude, in the middle of the winter, January, uh, he noticed that a north wind raised the temperature while a south wind lowered it. So warm air coming up out of the polar opening causes mirages of uh, allowing people around the Arctic to see this land inside the, the earth. Now, a person down here in the lower latitudes, if you see a mirage, you usually see the sky because you're looking down a highway and the hot layer of air just above the highway reflects yeah. the sky. Yeah, that's true. But up in the Arctic, it's exactly the opposite because warm air coming up out of the polar opening goes up way up above you. And in fact, um, it's called the, the temperature inversion. They, they they call it temperature inversion because it's warmer higher up than down next to the ice. Now, if the North Polar Opening, though, is, is, is indeed there, what, and you say it's in the ocean, what's keeping the water from not going down there like a drain, you know, just flooding the inside? Gravity. Gravity is, uh, uh, gravity, as any phys student of physics knows, is caused by a concentration of mass. Wherever you have the largest concentration of mass, that's where gravity flows. And all the, the Earth's mass, except a very small portion of it, is in the Earth's shell, not in the center of the Earth. So uh, as you're going around the curvature of the opening, your feet are held to the surface of the planet, just like uh, it is on the outside of the surface of the planet. Can you assume, Rodney, that uh, if the Earth formed this way, other planets form the same way? Absolutely. On my website, I have a picture of a Hubble Space Telescope image of the North Polar Opening of Mars. Uh, usually, the North Polar Opening of Mars is covered by so much cloud cover that they think they they claim it's ice, but it's really not. They're they're actually 
uh, clouds. And these clouds, they, they go way up in the atmosphere, up to 50 miles up in the atmosphere, uh, so high that you can even see it by telescope from Earth that it stands above the uh, curvature of the planet. Uh, but on this one certain day, there was hardly any cloud cover. And you can see down inside the polar opening, it looks like a giant crater. And I'll, I encourage you all to go to my website and look at that picture of the, of the North Pole opening of my, Mars. Now, science, astronomers have reported throughout history, and, and you can find uh, records of this, that they have seen gleams of the inner sun shining out through uh, certain times of the year mm-hmm. and certain passages of the of Mars around, around the, the sun, uh, of the inner sun of Mars shining out through its polar opening. They have also seen that uh, gleams of light shining out from the North Pole opening of Venus. And uh, Mercury, curiously, is uh, rolling around the sun on its side with its polar opening pointing towards the Earth. And it has, they have scientists, uh, astronomers have seen this bright white spot in the middle of uh, uh, Mercury. I'm wondering what it is. And, and all it is is the polar opening of Mercury. Uh, and the inner sun shining out through it, and we can see it. All right, let's talk a little bit about this expedition that is planned. Exactly when is it planned? Steve Curry uh, of uh, the expedition company of Pro Utah contacted me about a year ago. He's of my same faith, and so he uh, wanted to work with me and uh, asked me uh, if anybody had been planning an expedition to the to the hollow earth, and I said, yeah, there's been several people. Jan Lomprecht of South Africa, when he was writing his book in 1998, was uh, planning an expedition but never got off the ground. Um, there's also the International Society for, for Hollow Earth, uh, people that were planning a reflight of the Admiral Byrd flight, uh, and, and I haven't heard that they've been able to get that off the ground. But uh, Steve Curry has been... Uh, taken uh, satisfied explorers all around the world for over 30 years, a quarter of a million people he says he's taken, uh, mainly river rafting, and uh, he wanted to know if we could put together an expedition to the hollow earth and wanted to know uh, where I thought the most likely location of the North Pole opening is. And so we went up to Provo and visited with him, and we put together this expedition, and um, Steve has chartered a Russian nuclear icebreaker called the Yamal. It has I mean, 70... and, he, and he, by the way, is a very experienced expedition organizer. He's been doing this for 250,000 people over the last 30 years, right? He has been taking people all around the world uh, on expeditions to China, to Tibet, to uh, so, uh, South America, to Russia, uh, all over the world. Uh, in fact, in his... Uh, expedition down the Zampo Gorge in Tibet uh, with uh, Steve Lengren, uh, who is a, uh, one of the most famous explorers in the world today. Uh, they found a hidden falls in about the year 2000 over in Tibet. And he was talking with the Tibetans, and they said, they told him that behind this hidden falls is a cavern that goes to Agartha, which is their word for uh, hollow earth. And according to their legend, many years ago, the king of the inner world came out through this uh, cavern and told his, their ancestors that someday his, their people would emerge to outer earth to help establish world peace. This uh, reminded Steve about his father had told him when he was a boy of 15 years old when his father organized the expedition company. His father had ju- just read, uh, apparently, uh, Raymond Bernard's book, The Hollow Earth, again, and uh, told his family uh, that he would like to go to the North Pole to find the polar opening. Well, they thought he was a little bit off his rocker, didn't, didn't put much credence in what he was saying, but he did put together this uh, highly ex- successful expedition company. But once uh, Thai- the Tibetans told uh, Steve about Agartha and this cavern, 
he got him to thinking again about the hollow earth and uh, what his father had told him many years before. And so he decided to put together this expedition, and I've been helping him. And we're inviting anybody that's interested, as scientists, uh, explorers, uh, tourists. Uh, this ship, uh, the Russian nuclear icebreaker, uh, is one of the most powerful ships in the world, 70,000 horsepower. It cuts through the Arctic ice like butter. And you really have a pretty good idea where you're going, right? So this isn't going to be trial and error, right? I have triangulated the sightings of these mirages around the Arctic and estimated where the North Polar opening is located uh, based on these uh, sightings of mirages. Uh, John Lomprick of uh, South Africa in his book, 19, uh, the Hollow, uh, uh, his book, Hollow Planets, that he published in 1998, uh, I helped him a little bit on proof in his book and giving him some su suggestions. But he did an excellent analysis of these mirages sighted around the Arctic. For example, per Admiral Perry on his way to the Pole in 1909 sighted land, a mirage of land northwest of his uh, trek to the Pole from uh, Ellersmere Island, northern Canada. Now, there's a... Uh, a Weller named uh, Captain Keenan that sighted uh, this same mirage of land northwest of Harrison Bay, Alaska. And the Russians have sighted it north of the New Siberian Islands. So, uh, and then Olaf Jansen, he sailed northeast of uh, France Joseph Land. So what I have done, I've triangulated the, the directions in which this uh, mirage of land have been sighted and estimate that the North Pole Open is located at 84.4 north latitude, 141 east longitude. And we are taking uh, these gyroscopes that will help us to de detect the dip into the earth as we start to go into the polar opening so that we can uh, find the 90-mile uh, wide neck. Sounds like a pretty interesting expedition. And i got to tell you, Rodney, I'm not sure about the hollow earth theory yet, but I do believe that you're convinced that it's there, and you speak with a convic conviction uh, that, uh, you know, I, I think you believe you're telling the truth, and I think that's important. Well, you know, uh, I'm a very religious person. I've, I've discovered a lot of historical and scientific evidence for a hollow earth, but my main conviction is based on my religious uh, beliefs. My uh, analysis of the scriptures indicate that our earth is hollow because that's what the scriptures describe when, and when describing the spirit world of this earth. The location of hell was, is here among us and, and down in the in, in, the, in the shell of the planet is where the, the Satan and his angels are here to tempt us. Hold on now, hold on. Let me ask you some questions about that. I thought the people who were in the hollow earth, the people, were pretty enlightened people, good people. Is that true or false? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Olaf Jansen described the people of inner earth as North European type peoples that uh, have blonde hair or red hair or brown hair, uh, blue eyes, uh, very tall, uh, very educated, highly advanced in the sciences, and in uh, music, very, very musical people. All right, so and we're also to, very friendly. Where does Satan then and those evil spirits come from in terms of being in the hollow earth? What, what, what did you mean by that? Okay. Uh... The spirit world, this, this world, earth has a spirit body, just like our bodies have a spirit inside of us that give us light, uh, give, give us life. This earth is a living being. It has a spirit world. The spirit world is the spirit body of the earth. The scriptures describe the spirit world uh, as a hollow earth. And uh, the location of hell has to uh, uh, the scriptures describe the uh, the spirit world as having two separate locations 
One is the location of the evil spirits, and the other is the location of the righteous spirits. The righteous are in what they call paradise, and the, the evil spirits are in what is called hell. And the scriptures also describe them as being separated by a, a great gulf. In uh, the book of Luke, uh, Abraham is up in heaven with the poor man, and the rich man's down in hell, and he, he says to Abraham, send me down Lazarus because I'm burning up in hell down here. And Abraham says, I can't, because between you and us, there is placed a great gulf that makes it impossible for us to go there and you to come here. Well, right? I've, al I've always believed that the planet is alive. I, I think it heals itself. It fights back to heal itself. I've never thought of it, though, as having a spirit like we have it, though. Its spirit, our spirit, uh, the spirit of our bodies looks just like us, but it's made out of a... a an etheric substance that is very thin, okay, but is uh, also eternal. It will never die. Two years ago, Art uh, interviewed a fellow by the name of Dallas Thompson, who was a hollow earth researcher. He was planning on journeying to the center of the earth in a mini helicopter, believing that he would be able to travel by a hole in the south pole through the hollow earth and out through the hole in the north pole. He claims that the holes into the hollow earth really exist and that monks regularly travel through the holes in order to visit a Tibetan village called Shambhala. Are there other people, Rodney, though, that are trying expeditions or want to do what you, uh, what you are doing? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, had uh, several of the people that have joined our expedition that have said that they have been planning an expedition of their own and just, just decided to come with us because art seems to be the most well-planned and safest way to go. Uh, like, like I said before, Jan Lamprecht of South Africa had been planning an expedition to go up and look for those mirages of land seen in the Arctic, uh, but uh, never was able to get enough uh, contributions for his uh, expedition. If there was a submarine that was um, deep in the ocean, and kind of went into the curvature of the hollow earth as well, would they know they were in there? I mean, at what point would they realize there's something wrong here? Uh, they could detect if they're going in the polar opening, if they're using a gyroscope. A gyroscope is an in instrument that has a spinning wheel that, like, what we're going to do is at the North Pole set it that horizontal, and then as we go south on the 141st meridian as we go into the polar opening that gyroscope will maintain its original orientation in space and so it'll start looking like it's dipping up and uh, we can also use that to help us find the polar opening because uh you know if we if we go in down in and then come back up because we're not going straight down into the neck uh, the gyroscope will detect when we get down to the bottom of the dip and start coming back up. So then we just go turn around, go back down to the bottom of the dip, and make a right angle turn, and then it will take us straight in. Assuming you're correct, Rodney, at what point would you start to see, as you go into the curvature and down, at what point would you see the inner sun? About a, 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 probably less than a quarter of the distance in you would see the inner sun and how far would that be roughly well it, i estimate it to be about uh 500 and uh some odd miles from this from the north pole so not a lot of uh not a lot of miles here so you would get there in this this uh this this cutter this russian cutter goes how fast how many knots it goes about 12 knots through ice and about 19 knots uh, through open ocean 19 open ocean, so it could take you another 30, 40 hours, I think, once you're in 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 the curvature to be able to see the sun. Yeah, our uh, itinerary is that uh, we will start from Murmansk, Russia, where is the port of these uh, nu nuclear race, uh, icebreakers, and it's about a thousand miles of open ocean to, before you start to get to the ice, just north of the Franz Joseph Land. 
and then another 400 miles to the pole, and then we would have another 500 miles uh, of ice as we're going in the polar opening before we get to open ocean within the polar opening, and then we estimate another 500 miles to the inner continent. We constantly hear about scientists down at the South Pole working on something. I don't know what it is. Is it possible it's this? They're working at the at the opening of the hole? Oh, yes. This is world top secret. Uh, our government knows all about this. Uh, there are certain elements in the military that are charged with exploration and study of the hollow earth. But it it is considered a world top secret. They don't let any of it out. Uh, but I do do have an interesting email on my website if you'd like to read it from a, a member of my church that says he he knows several uh, military men that have seen the South Pole opening. All right, how do I find that email and I can read it on the air? Uh, on my new items uh, link. Uh, I went to a UFO conference uh, in 1991 here in Phoenix, and they, there was a, a fellow there that had a table uh, that was selling a book that uh, he, he said uh, uh, someone he knew, uh, I don't think it was him, was taken in a flying saucer in the, to the Bermuda Triangle, and there was a, uh, a underground city down there. Right. And so uh, there probably is uh, some uh, 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 quite a bit of energy emanating out of that location just because of the city that is uh, on the bottom of the ocean. Right. And the other question would be, um, as far as this being top secret, uh, you had uh, stated that there are a few officers or a few leaks of this. I wonder also if the leaks that you know have been, I guess, thrown out to the public, would that have anything to do with that movie that came out years ago, Journey to the Center of the Earth? Uh, the, would the, it be because of leaks? Uh, no, the the Journey to the Center of the Earth uh, was based on uh, Jules Verne's book, uh, The Journey to the Center of the Earth, uh, which he wrote in the last in the uh, late 1900s, and it's, it's just a fiction book, but it, it, I believe it's... 1800s, it, it, 1800s. Yeah, late 1800s, actually in 1864. Uh, but I think it was his book was uh, based on uh, probably eyewitnesses because uh, he was very uh, correct in everything that he said in his book. All right, thanks for your phone call. Appreciate it. Let's go to our wild card line. Welcome to Coast to Coast. You're on the air with us. Hi there. Well, Merry Christmas. You um, too. Let me throw out a, an alternative hypothesis that may explain some of the phenomena. I think your guest is on to something, but I'd like to run an idea by him. And let me. You got it. Let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm a 47-year member of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, Vice President of the Baton Rouge Astronomical Society, and I was arts guest for three solid hours uh, a year ago on November 8, 2003, in regard to my book, The Universe and Multiple Reality. Uh, we know that strange things happen when you have rotating electric and magnetic fields. Witness Art's historic interview of Al Bielik on the Philadelphia Project. Uh, witness what happens to people who are sucked up into tornadoes and happen to live but find themselves ejected a week later with no uh, accounting for the uh, lost time. We have a rotating electric and magnetic field at the North Pole, and I would question whether this is simply a gate to an alternative parallel universe, a parallel edition of the planet Earth, and there would be millions of them one could flip into, and that it doesn't necessarily involve a hole in a pretty solid piece of rock. It involves simply a transition into a parallel universe. Like a portal, perhaps. A portal, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. We're talking parallel universes and multiple reality, as in my book, The Universe and Multiple Reality. And I, too, have a website, if I may mention it. Sure, because uh, i, I got to believe uh, you're Professor Franks, by the way. 
right. and euniverses.com. But, but I just want to throw that out and see what your guest has to say about it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Professor. Appreciate you being on the show. What do you think of his theory, Rodney? Well, uh, first of all, uh, people have been through the North Polar opening, Admiral Byrd, Olaf Jansen. Uh, there was a person uh, named Reinhold Schmidt in California, Los Angeles, in 1958. Uh, he had what he thought was a daydream to tell him to go out to this uh, this quarry outside the city and while waiting there, a uh, flying saucer swooped down from the sky. Uh, uh, humans uh, stepped out of it and invited him to go on a ride. They even uh, r took his car inside the flying saucer. They took off and went up above um, Alaska, and he says that they went through a hole in the Arctic Ocean, and they went in. They were just suddenly in another place where there was another sun and landscapes and cities. He was taken on a tour of the hollow earth, and then when he was brought back through the, the polar opening, he says that he saw the horizon dip and right itself as he went through it. And uh, the reality of the polar opening, I think, has been documented. Uh, we, uh, on our expedition, hope to prove, prove it with uh, uh, film. Uh, we have uh, Scott Lindgren, who is a film producer, uh, plans on uh, taking uh, IMAX theater uh, film on our expedition. But in regards to what this uh, fellow says about a parallel universe, uh, uh, I would explain it as being the spirit world of this earth, just like our bodies have a spirit inside of it that looks just like us. The spirit world of this earth looks just like it, and it's hollow. It has a, it has an inner sun, which is the location of paradise or the heaven of this earth, has the, the shell of the earth as being the location of hell where the evil spirits uh, inhabit. Uh, so uh, the, the body of the earth looks just like the spirit, it's spirit body. Our government oh. has, uh, we have paid our, our servants in the government and they have uh, sent explorers to the hollow earth and have kept this secret from us. You would we, think they would do something to stop this expedition, Rodney, don't we, you? We feel like that we, the people, are the, have a right to know. We are the sovereigns. Uh, the servants in our government have not told us the truth about our earth. We feel like that we have a right to know. And we're, uh, we're inviting anybody that would like to go with us uh, to determine uh, if the hollow earth theory has any validity. We expect to find the evidence that the hollow earth uh, does exist, that the polar openings do exist. What if you don't find the evidence? Will, will, you, will you then change your mind? Would you say your theory is not correct, or would you continue onward? We feel confident that we will find the polar opening uh, using our gyroscopes. Uh, we'll be able to detect the opening into the hollow earth, and uh, but uh, is uh, as in an expedition, we have to offer an alternative in case we don't find the polar opening. That we will just continue from the North Pole to the New Siberian Islands, where uh, uh, there have been a lot of mammoths uh, and and exotic uh, animal remains that that uh, hollow earth theorists uh, claim uh, have uh, floated out from the inner earth where they have frozen in in the ice and dumped on the Art, uh, Siberian coast. Uh, but we felt confident that we will find the North Polar opening. If you, if you find the opening, Rodney, how far down are you going to go? Are you going to keep going until you come out through the south? Yeah, our itinerary is to go into uh, until we find the inner continent, which is about halfway through the polar opening, and then uh, try to find the river that, that uh, Olaf Jansen uh, sailed up uh, called the Heidekel. We will go up this river to the uh, port city where he uh, was taken in called Jehu, and uh, there we'll uh, try to take an inner earth uh, monorail train to their capital city, at the Garden of Eden to visit the palace of the king of the inner world. 
Let's hope they're friendly. All the people that uh, have record of the, that went to the Hollow Earth uh, all report that they were very friendly people. Admiral Birch said they were very friendly people. Olaf Jensen said they were very friendly people. Uh, Reinhold Schmidt uh, was treated very kindly by the people that took him in the flying saucer and that they would not accept us with open arms. Very possible that from the moment you're in the opening, you may get an escort, don't you think? We would hope that, that they would, yes. This email, by the way, that, that you had uh, told me about is from a first name Jack, who said he spent 20 years with special forces uh, in the Navy, and uh, he said that he knows of uh, several uh, high-level uh, officers who have told him of secret studies, as this is his email, of scientists going down in the hole working with tribes there, and... Uh, when we come back, why don't you explain a little bit more for me, Rodney, on what these tribes mean? Uh, is he talking about those lost tribes of Israel or the people who are down there now? Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd like to know why he calls them uh, tribes. So we'll uh, we'll be back with you in just a moment, right here on Coast to Coast AM. We'll... Why do you really believe that that government is not telling us? if there is a hollow earth. I mean, what's the big deal to us as human beings? I mean, I don't think anybody would get upset if they said, look, the, the planet's hollow and they're, 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 they're people. Well, I guess if they say they're 15-foot people, maybe that would be a little staggering. Do you think we're afraid? Is that why they're not telling us? Yes, they're very much afraid. Uh, my, my research, uh, in my research, I have concluded that uh, the lost ten tribes of Israel are in the hollow earth that their king is uh, sits on the uh, inherited throne of David, which the Lord promised to David in the Bible that there would always be a son that would sit on his throne over the house of Israel. Uh, my conclusion is that this government of the hollow earth is the political kingdom of God, and that uh, they will. The prophecies are that they will expand the outer earth and help establish world peace. Well, I and hope those, somebody those, does. Those people that are controlling our government are the super-rich internationalists, uh, the bankers that make uh, tons of money off in all these wars that they have been sending our children around the world fighting just to make them rich. And uh, our government has been borrowing trillions of dollars from their private bank called the Federal Reserve, and uh, we're uh, very close to bankruptcy Ever since the Rothschilds set up the central banks in Europe in the 1700s, uh, he, he had a plan uh, of how to collect on governments that wouldn't pay up or went bankrupt, and that was to uh, use the interest money to build up an enemy. Uh, George Washington had a vision uh, during the years uh, uh, at Valley, uh, uh, during during the winter at Valley Forge, at three, in which which an angel appeared to him and showed him the future of the United States, that we would pass through three great trials in this country. And the first one was the Revolutionary War, the second was the the, the war between the states, and then he says at the end of the age the whole world would attack us, uh, and we would be fighting them on the streets defending our country. Well, I think this is all going to happen because our country is going to go bankrupt and the international bankers are going to try to repossess us. This now, war will nearly destroy our country. What, and, is it got, what does this have to do with the hollow earth, though? Well, once our country, uh, this, our, our government is destroyed uh, and the governments of this world are pretty much destroyed by this coming war, the, the government... Go, the kingdom of God will expand from inner earth to outer earth. Well, we'll find out as soon as you get in there. Uh, if you're going in 2006, when do you expect to come back? Uh, well, our itinerary is for 20 days. That We, ex uh, we uh, estimate uh, eight days to the pole and uh, about four days to the inner earth, and then we'll spend... A about four days in there, and then the rest of the day is coming back out. The magnetic field of the Earth is evidence that the Earth is hollow and has a solid uh, uh, core. 
and uh, that uh, the, even even uh, the sun has been noticed to have a very strong magnetic field. And scientists, uh, I found an article in uh, Scientific American in which they did a study uh, proving that um, gaseous uh, planets or stars uh, they 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 have this dilemma that because a, a gaseous st star could not produce a magnetic field, the hollow uh, the the magma field Earth uh, concept of science uh, would be unable to create the magnetic field of our Earth. The reason how our Earth has a magnetic field is because the inner sun is a crystal ball that. Uh, rotates at a different speed from the shell and has a elect, uh, electric charge as well as the shell of the earth has electric charge and these two charges rotating about each other creates this magnetic field and I did a recalculation of all the, the gaseous planets including the Sun that if uh, they are hollow and have a, sh a shell that's 10 percent uh, of the diameter of the planet, they would all be solid. My calculation for the density of the sun is that it is 2.6, which indicates that it is a crystal ball. Now, the, uh, the spirit world of this earth is divided into two places. Christ told the thief on the cross, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Uh, he told the Pharisees that where paradise was. Uh, like Per, per, uh, he says, that even as Jonas was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, even so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Before Christ descended into heaven after his resurrection, he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. So this earth has two, two parts. One, for the, for, for the righteous uh, spirits uh, of men who have died, and lived a righteous life, they are taken to paradise. That location in my uh, uh, study uh, is the inner sun. Olaf Jansen was told by the inner earth people that the inner sun is the throne of Jehovah, their God. Um, I did a study of uh, the book of, of Genesis in which it talks about the light that lights up on the first day of creation. And uh, God calls it uh, the firmament or the heaven. Uh, the heaven is, is singular. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That heaven, well, is the inner sun. Rodney, I read an email before the break that talked about uh, scientists claiming that the, they were aware of this, uh, according to the email. But they mentioned that they had met the tribes now, what were they talking about? The same thing that you've been talking about? Yes. Uh, 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 this this fellow that wrote the email uh, is a Latter Day Saint, and uh, we believe that in our in our uh, Latter Day Saint scriptures, that uh, has been revealed to us that the lost tribes are in the north, in the north countries, and they will come down. Uh, from the north countries in the latter days before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the uh, second coming. Uh, this is uh, according to my belief also that uh, these people of the inner earth are mainly uh, the lost tribes of Israel that migrated up there 2,500 years ago. What do you think the population is down there now? I mean, this, I'm, this is all speculation, I'm sure, but is it in the millions? Well, I'm sure it's in the millions, but uh, Olaf Jansen says that they don't get married until they're in their 60s, and they lived about 800 years old, so they probably uh, don't have as many children as we do. Uh, I would say that they are uh, less populous than we are, but more powerful. Do you think they're curious to see what's going on the uh, surface? Oh, yes. They send their flying saucers out all the time to Earth. Um, mainly piloted by their androids so they don't get shot out of the air. So how many years do you think they are ahead of us technologically? A hundred? Fifty? Oh, no. I think they're at least 2,000 years of, uh, in advance of us. Uh, Galileo started the scientific revolution uh, only 300 years ago. Right, right. So they're way ahead of us then. Oh, how yeah. did they, they get this technology? 
uh, they've been progressing uh, since they went up there 2,500 years ago. So without any wars or disease, uh, they were able to progress uh, a lot faster uh, continuously. It's just like us. Uh, if we, we went from the time of Galileo uh, to 2,500 years into the future from Galileo, we would be at their uh, level of, of technological advancement. What do you think their cities look like? I mean, tall skyscrapers and things like that? Uh, they uh, No, they, they build their cities. Uh, they're not very uh, as large as some of our largest cities, but uh, they have uh, unique uh, architecture. Uh, mirages of the, the an inner earth city scene uh, in Alaska uh, describe them uh, as more oriental type uh, architecture. Uh, Olaf Jansen described them building uh, big palaces of uh, music that they love to to sing, and uh, they they have lots of uh, gold and silver and uh, valuable um, stones that they decorate their palaces with. And uh, they are a quite interesting people. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Nori along with Rodney Clough and your phone calls as we wrap things up this final half hour. Rodney, think about this theory, that we don't have a hollow Earth, but maybe we have some indentations on the North and South Poles that curve in uh, to the point where it's warmer and vegetation grows, trees grow, there are animals, and maybe even, indeed, these civilizations. Is that a possibility? That was a theory of a Lieutenant Green, uh, the, the physicist that went with Admiral Perry to the pole in 1909. Uh, he... Uh, spoke with the uh, uh, Greenland Eskimos and asked them what happened to the Viking colonists that had uh, colonized uh, Greenland for over a thousand years and uh, where they had disappeared to. And uh, apparently when Greenland was recolonized in uh, 1721 by the Europeans, they didn't think to ask the Eskimos what happened to the to the uh, lost Vikings. But... Uh, the Eskimos told Lieutenant Green that uh, every year they would go farther and farther north because of better hunting towards the north. And then one winter, uh, the hunting party came back and told the rest that uh, they had found a pirate of paradise up in the Arctic. And so they just all packed up their bags, the Eskimos said, and just uh, uh, off traipsed off across the ice and never came back. Uh, so Lieutenant Green believed it out there uh in this area where I estimate the, the polar opening is, there was a, a, a continent, uh, the, an island, that was heated by um, geysers and volcanoes and uh, kept warm um, in that manner. And uh, they were going to go up there and explore. And it wasn't too long after that that Admiral Byrd uh, flew up there and found out that it was the polar opening and flew inside the hollow earth. Actually, there's been a couple of movies based on this. Uh, there's a book, there's a movie uh, put out by uh, Disney uh, called Island at the Top of the World. It's based on uh, Lieutenant Green's uh, idea of there's a, an island out there. Magnetic fields caused by, like a dynamo, has two solid parts, one rotating about the other, with uh, both, both of them having... Uh, uh, Le electrical currents. So okay. the, cur the current in the shell of the Earth and, and the uh, electricity of the inner sun, both of them being solid, uh, one rotating at a different speed uh, about the other is what causes the magnetic field. Now, so scientists can't under understand why the Earth's magnetic field is inclined to the Earth's axis. This can only be explained but by the hollow Earth theory, which was proposed by... Uh, Ed, Edmund Halley back in the 1600s uh, in which he proposed that the Earth's uh, magnetic field is created because the Earth is hollow and has a, a core that rotates at a different rate than the shell. Well, the South Pole is uh, on a continent and it's easier for the nations of the Earth to set up uh, their bases and, and to uh, explore it uh, probably easier than up in the Arctic. 
and uh, uh, as far as uh, what they find down there, uh, they're they're not telling us what they're what they're finding. We just hear rumors. And uh, what are you hearing, Rodney? You there? Yes. What 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 are you hearing in terms of what they're finding down there? <laughs> Just like the guy that emailed me and says he he's he knows uh, a bunch of military men that have seen the polar opening. I mean, our government's not telling us about this. We we just hear it by the grapevine, and, and the inner sun uh, is is not maintained there by magnetism. It's maintained there by gravity and a combination of gravity and also ion ionic uh, of force of the, the ion emission, the radiation that the, the inner sun puts out helps it maintain its uh, central location. Astronauts that went to the moon, uh, interestingly enough, uh, when they uh, set foot on the moon and they dropped the uh, hammer and the feather, uh, I measured it and how fast it fell. And the moon has uh, a third more gravity, uh, one, about one-third the, of the gravity of the Earth, not sixth. Based on that, uh, how fast that hammer fell to the to the to the moon's surface, um, the scientists saying that the moon has one sixth gravity, uh, it's not true. Uh, for an illustration, is the the movie uh, Superman when uh, these uh, astronauts were up on the moon and they were jumping around. That's one sixth gravity. If you remember that movie, they were jumping around on one sixth gravity. Our astronauts that went to the moon, they weren't. Ju- they were not jumping around like that. There is not one sixth gravity on the moon. There's the moon is actually hollow also, and uh, the astronauts left uh, uh, seismograph- se- 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 seismographs on the moon and uh, dropped a third stage of the rocket onto it and uh, measured the uh, moonquakes going down into the moon's surface. And uh, it came back uh, r- revealing that the moon is hollow and has a shell about 60 miles thick. It's a very dense planet. Give me odds, Rodney, on your expedition on what you think its percent of success might be. We are going on this expedition on faith that we will find the polar opening and enter in. We're going in the spirit of Christopher Columbus. People laughed at him, made fun of him, called him a hollow head. And and uh, he believed that he was inspired by God to discover America. We we are, are going in the spirit of Columbus. We uh, have uh, a Russian nuclear icebreaker that has the ability to make it to the hollow earth. We have the ability to uh, find that polar opening, and uh, we hope that we can enter in and dis- and prove that our earth is hollow. And this knowledge that we will uh, that we uh, we will obtain will not be kept secret, because it's this expedition is a, an expedition of we the people. Earlier, only, only those of us who have money to buy a ticket on this voyage will will go. And so the knowledge that we obtain will belong to us, the we the people. Earlier, I asked you if you thought governments would stop you from this expedition. You didn't answer me. I want to ask you that again. Well, they haven't so far. Uh, uh, the uh, when Steve went to South America and did a conference down there, he was approached by uh, an agent of the Illuminati who offered to finance our expedition. Uh, we we felt like that uh, we we better not use his their money because they they from from past experience. Uh, they seem to try to control uh, everybody with their money. And they may have wanted to suppress whatever you might have found. Yeah. So this month, this expedition is going to be financed by we, the people, those, and uh, we will invoke the protection of the Lord and and uh, uh, hope that we can have his protecting care uh, uh, and make a successful journey. And we'll expect your satellite phone calls for daily updates, all right? Let's go west of the Rockies. Welcome to Coast to Coast. Hi there. Hi, good evening. Great show. I um, just 
wanted to uh, ask your guests and maybe some listeners about some stories that the Japanese, uh, during their movement uh, into the Aleutian Island change during the Second World War, lost several battalions to giants that were coming up through caverns and uh, islands in the Aleutian chain. And further to that, uh, since then, uh, geologists and uh, guys looking for iron, you know, minerals and oil and stuff like that have been... Uh, chased off the islands and they now have a cordon where they can't take uh, cruise liners within about 60 miles of these islands. I was just wondering if he's heard anything about that and do they have any nighttime in the, in the uh, center earth? That would, those would be my two questions. Okay. No, I haven't heard about these giants in these caverns but uh, yeah, there, I, my evidence uh, indicates that there are uh, cavern cities within the earth where uh, uh, people live and have lived for centuries. Uh, we don't know too much about them. Uh, we just hear uh, little. We hear rumors about uh, people living in caverns within the earth. Now, as uh, regarding the inner sun, uh, it, Olaf Jansen described the inner sun as being divided between its day and night sides. When they first noticed it, as they were going through the North Pole opening, it looked like a smoky color so that's why he called it the smoky god in his book uh, but every 12 hours a bright white side of it would come into view and uh, it was like day so uh, there is a day side to it and a night side and on the night side of it he says there's a large opaque area that has um, uh, bright uh, shiny holes that look like stars at night so no the, the sun inside uh is always visible, but it has a day and night side. And since it turns so very slowly, once every 700 years, uh, the the rotation of the shell about it makes the the effect of day and night. 